Hello everybody, Kino 1.7, it's finally here. It took a lot longer than expected and we apologize for that, but we think it was totally worth the wait. Highlights in this release are ProRes export on Windows, new integrations with Frame.io and ArchiWare P5, lots more metadata workflow options for Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, better HEVC support, and lots of other things that we're going to get to in the course of this video. For those of you who don't know what Kino is, it is a media management tool for video professionals for anything between camera and edit. Essentially, your Swiss army knife for dealing with media files in your workflows. Its main purpose is to eliminate repetitive, boring and time-consuming tasks or get obstacles out of the way and thus save you a lot of time and thus money. It's simple enough to use for directors or production assistants, but at the same time it's powerful enough for workflow tweaking, tech-savvy power users. It's used all around the world by video professionals like filmmakers, editors, corporate and public video departments, or in TV or cinema productions. What we want to do in this video is not just go through the technical aspects of the new features, but rather show them in the context of real life requirements, problems and workflows to show how they actually make your lives easier. Let's dive right in and go through the most important new features and improvements one by one. ProRes export on Windows. This has been requested by many of you and we're very proud to announce that starting with Kino 1.7 you can now export all ProRes flavors with an Apple certified ProRes integration. Our friends at Frame.io have created the gold standard for video collaboration. Kino 1.7 offers you a foolproof, super simple uploading workflow with logging metadata into Frame.io directly from Kino. That includes on-the-fly transcoding or subclipping if wanted. Applications for this are sharing dailies or VJs or field teams contributing footage to fast turnaround productions. For more information on this, we have a dedicated landing page for the Frame.io integration that will be linked underneath this video. For Final Cut Pro users, Kino 1.7 features a legacy media filter that lets you quickly find all the material on your drive that will no longer be compatible with Final Cut Pro for Catalina and beyond. This even works on Catalina. So whether you want to make an old project run on Catalina again or don't want to run into compatibility problems with Catalina and beyond, you can quickly find all the legacy files and transcode them to ProRes in just a few clicks. Also new is the possibility to drag and drop events from Final Cut Pro into Kino to salvage the metadata that your editors entered. And that means you can use that metadata in your stock library or you can use it in other projects or you can even use it in Premiere Pro or Resolve projects. Premiere users will be happy to hear that with Kino 1.7 XMP is now fully supported and the already super smooth workflow from Kino to Premiere is now fully complete taking into account all your ratings and tags and all the other metadata that's modeled in XMP. And what's more for Premiere editors is that you can also salvage Premiere metadata that was entered by your editors by exporting a Final Cut 7 XML from Premiere and re-importing it into Kino, merging with Kino's existing metadata. So you can also use that metadata in stock libraries or in other projects or use them in Final Cut Pro or Resolve projects. Kino 1.7 also has excellent use for people with proxy or dailies workflows. You can now transcode and recreate entire directory structures. We've added an inconspicuous checkbox that makes a world of difference. Selecting this option lets you recreate an identical folder structure in a different place containing the transcoded material. So imagine you wanted to hand your production assistant a drive containing proxies for all the rushes, potentially with LUTs burned in, for doing some logging. This can now be done with just a few clicks. I mean, this is already very handy, but if you combine this with a new and improved file matching algorithm in our metadata import, you can have your production assistant send back that logging data and then re-import this in Kino and merge the metadata with the original master files, even if the file extensions don't match. So let me repeat. You create a folder structure with your proxies with one batch operation using that new checkbox. You then hand your PA that material in an identical folder structure just with much smaller proxies. Your PA then does the logging. Your PA then sends you back that logging metadata. 
and then you apply that metadata to your masters on your original drive with a simple process that is very similar to relinking files in Final Cut or Premiere Pro. And if you have that problem on a smaller scale, say you have created a transcoded version of a file that you've already done some logging on. And then you want to have that logging data, your, your markers, subclips, ratings and everything on this new version of the file. With the new copy and paste function in Kino, this is as easy as copying effects from one clip to another within Final Cut or Premiere Pro. And that's really one of my personal favorites. ArchiWeb 5 probably is the most popular backup solution for backing up your media to LTO, Cloud or a different drive. With Kino's new ArchiWeb P5 integration, you can seamlessly send all your media that could be individual clips or could be entire folder structures to ArchiWeb P5, selecting an archive plan that you've defined with an ArchiWeb P5. So that now gives you a full end-to-end -end workflow from camera card to edit to LTO archiving. HEVC has become more and more relevant for filmmakers, not only as a delivery format, but more and more cameras nowadays produce it. Kino 1.7 introduces HEVC hardware accelerated decoding, both in player and transcoder, and on the Mac platform also HEVC export in the transcoder. Whether you're directly working with Avid Media Composer or you work somewhere in the vicinity of an Avid workflow, MXF OP Atom files can give you a headache because they are notorious for storing audio and video in different files, making them hard to handle in your workflows. Kino 1.7 introduces full playback support and transcoding support for OP Atom. That means that the player can just play back OP Atom files natively and you can transcode them to any other format using Kino's built-in transcoder. We saved one of the coolest new features for last, the new Boolean expression support in Kino's text filtering. Combining Kino's drill down function with text-based metadata search that applies to file names, tags, markers, subclips, descriptions, is already one of the most convenient ways to find your material on your drives. Combining this with simple Boolean expressions like and, or, and not, makes this the most powerful way to find your material without necessarily having to have a database mindset. Go check it out. Our beta users have said it's mind blowing. It's one of my personal favorites of this release too. Okay, these were the highlights for Kino 1.7. We surely hope there was something in there for you. For the full list of new features, improvements and bug fixes, check out the release notes that are linked in the article that is linked below. Tell us what you liked about the video, what kind of videos you would like to see in the future, or what kind of features you would like to see in Kino in coming versions.